Hi everyone, I'm Martina and today I thought I'd have a look at the election. <laughs> Big day today in the US. Uh, full disclaimer, I'm in Australia so I have no dog in this fight but I just wanted to pull some cards. I feel this year I'm paying more attention to this election for some reason so I feel like it is quite a huge event on our world stage right now. So um, I thought I would look at both candidates um, representing the emperor about um, order, um, taking control and um, taking ownership. So that's quite a, a leadership role. And I've pulled out a feminine emperor for uh, Kamala. And um, I've also, I was called <laughs> to pick this deck for Donald, Donald Trump. So, walrus energy. So, we'll see what the cards have to say. Um, the way this reading is going to take place is I'm going to look at each energies, um, what strengths they're bringing to the election if they win, or the presidency, and also look at what their shadow side is, just so that we can get some um, messages around that. And then also I want to have a look at what the the people want if Kamala um, wins and what the people want if Trump wins. And then I might reverse that in the sense that I might also get the collective fears from um, Harris fans and what they fear if Trump gets elected and then what Trump um, voters fear if Kamala wins the presidency. And then at the end of that, um, we'll look deeper into also the personalities of the two candidates and see what their influence is, what are the right reasons they're running, and maybe if there's any hidden agendas, whether it's just unseen agendas or if it's actually, um, yeah, a little bit on the, the shady side. And then hopefully that will lead our, our reading to who is the most likely candidate to win this election and maybe we'll just try and finish the reading with some medicine for either parties you know I feel like everyone would benefit from this reading just so that we can stretch our own critical thinking our own intuitive um, thinking and just see if we can get some clarity on why this is such a monumentous event in our times 2024 and yeah, let's just let's keep it quite open ended, um, but let's see where the collective is leaning into, and perhaps what the overall collective message of either candidate winning and why this is going to be, in essence, a lesson for all of us. And if we believe that everything is divinely timed and it's always in our highest good, um, for the highest uh, timeline, then. You know, we're going to have to look at it through a violet lens or a violet pill. So let's just see where the reading goes and let's go with Kamala first since, you know, ladies first. Why not? Okay, so this is Kamala's um, Emperor card. Weirdly, she has a school bus. I know there's been some, um, yeah, some quotes about her and... Um, that's interesting little note to say that we're tuning into the right card. I feel like there's a lot of projection. I mean, this makes also sense, you know, like I haven't, I don't know enough about American politics or even these um, candidates per se, other than what's, you know, stereotypically available um, in the media. Obviously, Trump has been around for a lot longer. Um, so I am aware of his celebrity, celebrity and, you know, I guess him being Donald Trump but um, and past president but um, with this energy for Kamala I just feel like there is a lot of expectation from her obviously to be the first female president so I feel like there's a lot of projection that's been placed upon her to kind of lead with her heart to try and, and lead with the, a feminine energy um, whether she owns that or not w w to be decided to be clarified later with the volca volcano energy, you know, I feel like this has been, um, it's been brewing for a while, right? This, this female president, and it's almost like 
it could also lean into the fact that be careful what we wish you know it could be quite explosive is it um, divine femininity um, I'm also looking at this image going like it's about to explode or um, so it, it kind of feels like still quite a masculine femininity or an alpha female I'm not sure so we'll just see what this card is going to represent down the track down the track but I do feel like yeah we'll just see what what's bringing through her energy we'll look at Trump a little later but let's start let's just get a little bit deeper knowledge with Kamala Harris so I've actually um, picked only the major arcanas from the deck just to see what her strongest quality is on her life path and why she's come forward to this, I guess, one of the leaders of the world stage right now. What is she bringing to the party? Two has actually dropped. So an ending of something and power and strength in another. I feel like she's learning in real time that the veil is slipping. There's an ending of the old and the beginning of the new. And it's like she's still wrapped up in some of the old paradigm. And I feel like she's not quite, um, or she's starting to learn, I guess, like I said, in real time on the job training about her own intuition. I feel like... Um, It's almost like she's having to release herself from whatever whatever surrounds her that's not for her highest good. And I feel like she needs to take that power on. I feel like it being a jewel card with a strength card, it's like she's actually going to have to start, if she becomes the candidate, her, her strength is going to have to start coming from her own intuition. It can't be from the structures around her that's from the old so whether her party around her is um has been leading her on some level um she's actually going to have to take charge of her own leadership on some level she can no longer play around um with energies outside of herself she's going to have to find that inner strength for herself she's not but she's doing it in real time, so I hope she catches up. She's probably realized that she may even be prey at this moment, even within her own party. I feel like this moment in her life is trying to set herself free, stand in her own power. Um, and I feel like some part of this legacy that she's already sort of established for herself is going to help lead that. Um not everything around her is for her highest good so if she doesn't learn that um quickly yeah um there's something about her having to figure out what kind of leader she will be i feel like this moment in time she's probably been leading other people's agendas and she's going to have to try and set herself free from what has been the old the old guard, so to speak. It's like she almost has to put meat on her bones, really. Like she might have the framework. She has some past experience. But because this is like a, a divine feminine um, calling, if she's going to become president, It has to be from a feminine side and I'm not sure she's standing in that power yet. She's got only one fit, uh, foot on this precipice of the old and the new. She doesn't look established. I feel like she doesn't quite have the structure, her internal structure. Um, to actually claim her own sovereignty. She's still being led by um, forces outside of herself. But let's just see if there is... What's the, what's the shadow energy to this? Let's 
solution problem again 19 it's like an ending and a beginning again it's almost like she's struggling to find the solutions to the problems that we need as a as a collective right now because she's still learning on the job i feel like she's gone through the apprenticeship of it surely as a vp i feel like being pushed out into the front um, magnifying glass of all of us it's highlighting some of her own growth that she needs to take and she might have to clear out some of this um, inflamed something needs to get expelled it's like that alpha female that I was talking about. Something needs to give. It's like there needs to be a clearing out of the expectation of what a female, an empowered female uh, role model looks like. And it's not by walking in masculine shoes. It's about trying to figure out what a strong female leader may look like in these times. And I'm wondering if she's just not quite able to problem solve This paradigm right now she's only halfway through um, this transition so I'm um, yeah let's just have a look at can she turn this around if this has been the lead up to the election has she um, got the miles to to convert this to convert this candidate candidacy has she proved herself to the voters has she maybe she, the people who are voting for her see her potential more than she sees it herself and then maybe if the election is um, going to be in her favor it might give her the momentum to see you know quite often we learn our biggest lessons and we 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 call a lot of our old thinking when we're in like a massive growth spurt and um, I feel like that's what Kamala has been going through right now. I'm not sure she was expected to be, obviously, um, in the running this year. It's, it has come upon her. Um, I just feel like there's a calibration that, that needs to happen. From the old to the new. There's the, sh She's going to have to calibrate her power and her strength in like, yeah in double time really she has to ground herself like out the, at this moment she just feels out of body and she's not sure how to anchor what all of this means really and what's expected of her um it's like she's i even feel like this it almost it represents a crown right it's not quite placed on her it's like it's in transition but she needs to actually reach out and and crown herself she has to lead herself first before she can lead a country um, and she may be learning that like I said in real time so let's see what do the people see in Kamala what are their collective hopes for her presidency of pentacles ace of cups they're just hopeful aren't they it's like uh, king of pentacles being masculine energy it's like they kind of want a, a brand new beginning with a lot more of an emotional component to their leadership I feel like in the past it's all been um, kind of ego based I feel I feel like with um, almost a complacency as well they were kind of looking for new energy a younger energy I guess coming off the back of Biden but um, that wasn't necessarily an option with um, Trump already being um, for the Democrat uh, Republican Party, 
um, and so she is actually a, a hope for new, younger, fresher dreams, abundance, sovereignty. What would it mean for themselves internally if we were able to literally, as she uh, wants to do, is turn a page on the past and expect a new future? Um, what does that look like? I feel like with the King of Pentacles, it's still quite a young energy here. So even if it wasn't a masculine, feminine representation in the cards, it's like, what sort of grounding, what is sort of solar plexus, um, internal um, power do you need to actually bring the collective, the dreams and hopes that they want? I know she spoke a lot about... Um, joy in this campaign and aspirations and dreams but it feels like it's young thinking at the moment it's a little bit still immature it's not quite within reach I, um yeah look let's let's just see i mean that's what the people want the people want confidence and um An emotional reset they want to re-remember what it's like when we would led, led with our heart with abundance and and joy I guess they're also thinking about their future children abundance um, have we got the economy where we need it to be. I feel like the youth seem a bit disenfranchised, a bit, what's the word, apathetic here. Um, it's almost like they're a bit disillusioned with the past of what it used to be like for... Um, financial um or the economy um but they're it's yeah they're kind of torn between what it used to look like and do we have the potential to get it again even though this is king of pentacles it doesn't feel abundant it feels like almost lost hope so yeah they're obviously trying to um It's almost like because of the economy being in such a bad place for most Americans, it's like their emotions are dry. It's like their hearts outside of the equation. It's like at the moment they're in such survival mode that it's even hard to reestablish their own sovereignty within themselves because they're just stuck in survival mode and they want to... Um, yeah, they do want to have the joy and aspirations and future dreams and the American dream, but it's it either feels like it's it's been run dry and it's like how do we refill those those dreams when you know the economy is not suiting most people. Let's see what um, they fear if Trump becomes the president. What do the Democrats fear Trump? They feel like they're going to be left on the outskirts and with no possibility to... Um, They'll be sitting around waiting for the solutions they want, the dreams that they wanted, and that they may, it might be a long time coming before they get to, to claim their dreams of what they think they will get or need or want at this moment in time, that it's going to be another waiting game. It's like we've seen this movie before and it's kind of like, we don't want to go to our grave still waiting for change. I feel like 
They were hoping this election would be a wake-up call, but if Trump comes back in power, they feel like it's going to be more of the same and even less optimistic than it was before and almost powerless. It's like they won't feel that they have the power to change it, that it will be over, overarching, over-controlling, over... They think that Trump sees the answers for only a few and not for the, the, the differences in all of um, the population. They're worried that um, things are going to either remain unchanged or that a lot of people are going to be left behind. That's their collective fear. Is it's almost like a standstill bottom of the deck seven of swords yeah they may feel betrayed they may feel judged they definitely feel like things won't go in their favor maybe they feel like there'll be an injustice to the growth of the people okay let's see what Kamala What's Kamala's strongest um, influences on her policies or what it will look like? What positive attributions will she bring in terms of policy to the collective? The Empress. Page of Cups. Of wands. Yeah, I do feel like she will learn her way. I think she's she's been forced, I think for all of us. So it's not only what will she will what influence she will bring for herself, but influence she will bring for the people. I think she's had some very quick hard lessons of what um empowered femininity is. And with the Empress, it's like, that is what the hopes and dreams of the people are in a female president. It's like, what other contributions can um, women make in a powerful leadership like the president of the United States of America? And like I said, if she doesn't learn it in real time and say the next 24 hours, or if she's not learned it up to now throughout this 60 day or 70 day lead up she had, um, she might not get it in time, but the lessons that she would bring if she, she did, if, the, if she was empowering herself along the way is that she would bring the hope for dreams and possibilities. I do think that is something she wants to bring. I'm just wondering if it's going to be a little too little too late. But either way, her journey will start again, even after uh, this election. If she loses, um, it's already in momentum. So maybe there might be another time to um, run for presidency in the future with a much uh, stronger sovereignty of herself. Um, With more pure intentions. Let's see um, what the, if there's any sort of negative or hidden influences that's unseen to us in terms of maybe hidden agenda. What's the, what's happening around Kamala that she may not even see and we definitely do not see at play. Unheard, unseen. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect. I feel like, you know, this. Um, there's a lot of voices. You know, this is this is a close election. It seems, and it seems like half the country has not been seen or has been not been heard. It could even be why. Kamala is struggling to find her voice so late in the game or the fact that we talked about the mask slipping you know like 
she's almost starting to unravel herself in a good way like unchain herself from old paradigms like the death card there has been an ending she's put some framework in place or people have projected some framework in place so meanwhile the collective or the, certainly the the woman's vote is projecting this femininity onto her onto her dress she's they're trying to empower her they're trying to make her a bit of a demigod a, a leader for for women for new change for um a progressive uh presidency that's what we want that's what the fairy tales want us to believe as well that you know everything is possible the land of the free the land of opportunity and it does feel very late in the usa to not have had a female president so far um but the mask i mean this is what i feel and I, I don't know if i'm jumping the gun with this reading i feel like this is the projection of we want this is what we all want is this empowered female i feel like with the death card and what she's stripping away from this outside influence of you know um i mean these are big predatory animals right i feel like they projected some framework onto her like she's got the structure to be a president but like i said before it's like there's no meat on the bones and i feel like she has to find that inner power right her own intuition her um you know that's what women are so good at is their intuition it's like to really anchor into that and let go of what the 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 projection of the masculine energy is with predetermined agendas and programs or maybe not for her highest good and the same with what the expectation of all of us trying to project onto her of what this first female president looks like and it's actually falling on something isn't at play right it's there's something unseen obviously there's a mask still here there's an there is an agenda <clears throat> and i feel like if kamala had learned these lessons sooner i think her voice would have been louder and more empowered And like I said, if this power isn't authentic, it may remain that we are, as a collective, still remaining to be unheard and unseen. And the frustration continues. It's almost like what we fear in Trump's election is what we, is also actually the same paradigm that's been hidden within the Democratic Party as well, if that makes sense. This also feels like what they've been projecting, not Kamala, but um, as part of the campaign about the rhetoric of Trump, is actually the projection or the agenda they may be holding with or without Kamala. Okay, so let's just see before we move on to Trump. What's the collective lesson that we all learn? Why would it be in our highest good for Kamala to be the next president of the United States? So if Kamala wins, what are we all going to learn as a consequence and why was it important now? your star family in this cosmic game of hide and seek <laughs> it's so funny if 
if she wins, the lesson for all of us is to find the light that we see in ourselves, in each other. We can't recognize it in others if we don't recognize it in ourselves. We have to be the lighthouse, um, maybe not the lifeboat, as I always say, but we have to, um, yeah, whatever Kamala has to learn to become president, we have to learn in ourselves. And if she manages to win this election, she's probably had to um, really dig deep and navigate her way through that to find out who's friend and who's foe. And um, because it's unseen and unheard, un un yeah, unseen and unheard, there is an intuitive power that we have to learn because not everything is what it seems these days. I feel like we're seeing that more and more on the world stage. And if we don't have our uh, calibrated um, third eye, for example, if we're not channeling our own intuition, if we're not sharpening those tools, we can no longer believe what we see or believe what we hear. So we're going to have to amplify that frequency and project that forward. So instead of projecting our fears on what the opposite um, candidate has or hasn't got in, in store for us, we have to project just like we've projected all of this power onto Kamala to be the first president of the United States. It's that we really need to be making those projections onto our own lives so that we can res recognize more of it in each other. And hopefully, this is what Kamala will bring to not only the United States, but also in um, foreign, foreign policy. So that's what we will learn if Kamala becomes president. Now I'm going to move on to Trump before I try and see if we can get a prediction of who is most likely to be the next president of the United States of America. Okay, let me just clear this Kamala energy and bring in Trump's energy. I'm actually going to bring in a oil just to clear the emotions of Kamala and bring in Trump. Verve, breathe, night, spark, vivacity in life and living. Just bear with me a second. Hmm, smells amazing. Okay. So, Donald J. Trump. It's so funny that I was drawn to these decks. I feel like. The walrus, no offense, Donald, but you know, you haven't been renown, renowned to be um, <laughs> the most uh, attractive character on the world stage. But I feel like this walrus energy has swagger nonetheless, well dressed walrus um, in a very decadent chair. So, yeah, that would make sense for Trump. He comes from uh, money, he comes from um, decadency, um, seems solid. Um, he definitely has confidence. We know that. He's strong in what he believes in. He's authentic, whether we like it or not. Um, and I guess with this purple velvet suit, um, we're hoping he has a vision, whether we like it or not, whether we appreciate the delivery of it or not um, yeah I mean love him or hate him Trump is still standing and he's been through a few rounds of <laughs> a lot of things in resistance a path of resistance for him has been tough right that's we can't take that away from Trump at all and he's still fighting so if we come through it from that violet lens, that violet pill, he's here for a reason. He's here to show us stuff. So let's see what his biggest attribute or strength of 
his character, what he's bringing to this presidency if he wins, what is happening to Trump. Same with Kamala. I did the major arcanas in that deck. Kamala, okay, let's see. There's oh my, too, many, too many cards. I'm just going to muscle test. We'll get two because Kamala got two. So one of the, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay. <sighs> the Fool and Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> it's mad because Kamala had the death card, right? So it's about endings and beginnings. And we've got also the beginning and also a Wheel of Fortune, like a bit of an ending too. So whoever's going to win this election, things are going to change dramatically. I mean, we're talking either a karma cleansing on a big scale and it's going to go from zero to a hundred in like no time. Same with the death card with Kamala. It's like, a f it's a final ending to something, whatever that is. Um, I think the strengths that Trump's bringing is the fact that he has no fear. I mean, he can literally jump off any uh, challenge that's thrown his way. Like I said, with the, re the, the so much resistance and obstacles put in his way. Um, since the beginning, really, from his first presidency to um, 2020 to now, 2024, here he comes again. Like, no fear, just like running and going for it, no matter what. Um, no matter what thorns or prickly bits he may fall into, he's, he's, he just has this unbelievable tenacity. Um, you know, confidence, whatever Kamala lacks in that regard, Trump has um, in, yeah, in spades, really. And then Wheel of Fortune, and well, that could represent the fact that he knows all things money, to lose it, to win it, to, to earn it, to build it, to manifest it, to multiply it. Um, and you would think he's not here for the money, I don't believe. He he's already has all of those. Um, coins so in terms of wheel of fortune is he trying to turn the table for the american people is that his biggest strength that he's able to almost turn the titanic around like he's he's maybe the person to do it he's got uh i won't say uh <laughs> big balls but he's definitely got some uh yeah he's definitely got cut yeah, he's got balls, I'm just going to say it. So, yeah, I mean, Trump, you, you can't deny his presence. It's, you know, it's it's huge, right? So let's see what the shadow energy is for Trump. That's um, part of his personality or weaknesses. Let's just muscle test. Freedom, sacrifice. <clears throat> Freedom and sacrifice. Again, isn't it funny? They're 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 so similar. Like nineteen is like one plus nine is ten. It's like a beginning and an ending. 2 plus 8 is 10. It's like a beginning and an ending. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the Fool and the Wheel of Fortune and the fact that, you know, it could... Trump has to be careful with his tenacity because it's like gambling you can go all in and he's gonna have to watch what he sacrifices to maintain freedom and put that freedom across all layers across all the board of 
foreign policy, domestic policy. Um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, I want to say that um, if there's any sort of re revenge DNA in Trump's uh, makeup, uh, be careful there. Um, I also think, I think in 2016 when there was their, was there Hillary uh, Clinton, um, he calls her crooked Hillary, doesn't he? Like he, he made a choice to not go after her. Um, but then I guess the establishment went after him. So I, he kind of rose above it back then and said it wouldn't look good for um, a president's first lady to, to go through that. And he let it go. Will he do it again this time in a similar situation because he's been so, uh, yeah, been targeted? Will he maintain his own sovereignty on what is best for the American people? Yeah, I guess we all know Trump has a little bit of an ego thing. Um, can it stay in balance, I guess, is some of the underbelly there. So let's see what the collective hopes for Trump supporters are. What are they hoping from his presidency? What is it that, um, yeah, what is it that they want out of this presidency? And why do they want it so much? What's important to Trump supporters or Trump voters? Four of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, The Sun. Yeah, I feel like, um, I mean, the images are pretty self explanatory. They're sick of being stuck with, uh, without the, the code to unlocking the financial prosperity that um, the United States is known for historically. Where's the money? Who's got it? Why can't we get access to it? What's happened? Who's guarding it? We need a creative solution to access it, to make it more fluid again. And I feel like with Three of Pentacles, it's like bringing a team together. It's like, how do we collectively work the problem? And I believe Trump supporters think that they, they will gain that in his presidency. Trump talks about draining the swamp. Is he going to, I know, I know he's got Elon Musk as well, doing a lot of um, culling of government agencies, so are they the wolves? Who's guarding this money? Who's Who's got the combination? It's really interesting, these cards. And I feel like I feel like the supporters or the voters of Trump think that he's got a good team and that they might all be there for the highest good. Um, I mean, that's yet to be determined, right? We, we don't know that, it's always election, but um, I feel like that's what the voters want. So that's why they're voting Trump. They think it's the collective team effort that they're, that the details in their policies is um, transparent, I wanna say, pure. They want to be open. They want it to be, they want it to be a conversation. I feel like online as well, you know, like there's more voices in the collective plan than just maybe one. Um, 
I feel like Kamala voters are also wanting the same thing. It's just being um, expressed differently. They want, you know, they they want the the abundance back, but it just seems like the the well is dry. You know. Okay, let's see what Kamala voters are fearful of Trump's winning the election. Temperance. Two of Pentacles. Five of Wands. <laughs> it's so funny how these cards are translating. Do you remember I was saying about Kamala feeling like when, if Kamala loses the election, they're going to be left on the outside and the fact that there's not going to be a plan for everybody. It's like Trump's going to be this dictator and, and, you know, cast judgment on what he thinks will happen. But it's the same with Kamala um, fears. It's the same with Trump supporters for Kamala. It's like... indecision decisions have to be made but there's too much conflict there's too much too many different opinions they can't they don't actually know what the game plan is everyone's trying to insert pieces of the puzzle they sort of loosely think what the plan is but every time they try and nail it down they can't decide what their policies are i mean look at all these different shaped candles it's like there's no continuity it's internal conflict they don't actually know who's the boss who's running the show um, if that's Kamala, because it's quite similar to this image of the emperor um she looks overwhelmed so they're a bit worried that Kamala is not going to be able to lead the ship with all of the counsel and advice from her um, cabinet I don't know what you call it in America but this you know the staff it's like again overwhelm again overwhelm they just have no confidence in in Kamala I think obviously makes sense but um obviously not looking objectively right like there's good and bad in all and bad and good and all so let's see what is it that trump actually wants to bring in this okay this, this is going to be his legacy right it's his legacy uh presidency if he wins It'll be his final four years. What will his biggest changes or influences be uh, in terms of what he brings to the table? King of Cups. King of Pentacles. <laughs> of course, Trump. And full at the bottom, looking back at the past. It's almost like... <laughs> that's totally Trump trolling the other side, right? On his little unicycle, blowing the trumpet. <laughs> okay, Donald. So yes, he's going to bring King of Cups and King of Pentacles. 
this is what his, the not just what he thinks he's going to bring. This is his um, these the cards of what he would bring if he was voted president. I mean, you've got double king energy. Like he may he may bring healing to the company uh, to the country and prosperity. That's I mean. He might unite America, despite the projection of it so far. It looks like, I mean, he's been traveling this pathway with one oar, you know, like he's kind of had to yeah, I mean, like, it, he's a survivor. He's a survivor, he's a leader. Um, he's strong and he's powerful. I mean, those are good attributes. Forget, you know, I mean, well, you can't take that away from Trump. He's all of those things. Um, he's probably divine masculine, or at least they're certainly masculine. He's definitely in his power element. So I often wonder as well, He's not the same Trump from before. Like, this is 2.0. I feel like... I don't think being assassinated twice doesn't bring you to your knees. It's definitely a come-to-Jesus moment. And I wonder if it's not softened him, but he's had a lot of growth spurts. You know, we talk about Kamala trying to, like, learn on the job. He's had, like, what is this, nine years of like brutal lessons so I do feel like he probably isn't if he wins he's kind of entitled to this moment where he's like na 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 to the other side you know but let's see what hidden forces that are unseen either from Trump's hidden agenda or his party's hidden agenda Let's see what hidden hmm. punish limited. These could link to that uh, freedom sacrifice shadows aside. You know, he may. There may be a taste of revenge. There may be a lot of heads that might roll. Um, we might have, or he might have, a limited ability to explain that to the people. He might... Maybe he'll get punished along the way. Maybe he'll get trapped. Maybe there's a limit in his policies or... Um, his campaign that can't come to fruition. There's for, there may be forces working against Trump. Um, yeah, he might get stuck on what he's wanting to achieve. He may get, you know, he might get cornered again. Um, I think with his team that he seems to be wanting to bring in, that's gonna that's gonna scare a lot of money spiders. <laughs> Maybe even some criminals. Corruption. There's going to be a lot coming in Donald Trump's way if he wins. And he's really going to have to fight the establishment, I think, as well. There's there's a lot of forces around him. There's a lot of hidden agendas that don't really want him to succeed. They're terrified of him actually coming in and potentially throwing his weight around or throwing the revenge card around. I feel like I want to go slow on that because of the King of Cups. I feel like he's... He's got more, much more emotional intelligence, this campaign, despite what the media might be saying. I feel like he has actually had that come to Jesus moment. So I feel like, yeah, there's still a lot to be revealed for sure. But let's see what uh, collective lessons he's going to bring himself and us if he wins this election. What is he bringing? Why would it be in the highest good of all for Trump to be 
the President of the United States of America. What is he bringing to teach us? Why is he on the world stage at this time? I feel like the cards say it all. Whew, for better, for worse, Trump is showing us how to have courage, how to make it a win, win, win. If he can not only win this election twice, but can he win the people? Can he win his, um, can he win all of Americans in this presidency? Will he be able to have this moment as well, like in celebration? Like, I think he can. He's at least teaching us that there might not be a someday, so act now that no matter what is in your path, you just have to keep challenging it. You have to keep stepping up. You have to keep competing. You have to keep participating. You have to keep rising up. You have to show your strength. You can measure your strength. You can keep fighting for the prize. I guess that's his catchphrase, right? Um, fight, fight, fight. Win, win, win. I think the disparity in Kamala and Donald is the fact that, you know, Kamala is having to learn what her sovereignty is. And if she can do it in real time, amazing. But Trump already has that. Trump already knows what he is. He knows the center of his universe. He knows how to uh, work the world around him. And, you know, whatever happens in this election, um, I believe in the people. I believe that people are never wrong and it's just what medicine can we take from it if it's not the result that you might be looking for and as such I'm going to give you some Australian animal energy as a bit of medicine of how to see this from a violet perspective and I think before I do that, let's pull cards on I feel like it's already clear, but in case it's not, let's pull cards on who is going to win this election. As much as I loathe to do predictions, <clears throat> I feel like uh I feel like I want to with this one. So let's try and get some angel answers. And let's get two cards each. Let's see if we're allowed to see the answer. Two cards for Kamala on the outcome of the 2024 election. Does Kamala win the election? Does Kamala win the election? The situation will improve. No. Let's see. Can we have two cards for Trump? Does Donald J. Trump 
win the 2024 election. Compromise. Big happy changes. I'm going to say that it might be Trump's year. And maybe not Kamala's yet. I feel like that is an ending card of the situation will improve. She's going to learn a lot from this uh, campaign. Um, it's not her time. That's an affirmative no. Um, but it's going to take her in the right direction. She is going to heal from this. She's going to see the light. She's going to see where she went wrong. She's going to tune into her um, her guides, her higher, higher perspective. She's going to figure out how to stand tall. She's going to be able to share that with others. And with Trump... You know, I feel like he has compromised. He's brought a lot more people to the, the party this time. I feel like he knew he couldn't probably win it alone. And I think because it will be his uh, final presidency, he wants to balance the scales of justice. He does want to make a judgment call, but it might just be on everyone's behalf. I feel like this is guided. The angels have spoken. And it's big happy changes. I feel like... I feel like he will leave America in a better state than he found it. And I think he's going to he's going to win the hearts of the people too. I think we'll all be surprised at the legacy he may leave. Um but let's get some medicine to help swallow if Kamala wins. No, if Trump wins, no, let me shuffle again. If Kamala wins, what medicine does the Trump voters need? What would help Trump voters? Grace, butterfly. It's just another transformation, right? It's a growth period. It's just... I'll interpret it in a minute. If Trump wins, what do Kamala voters need in terms of medicine? What is the message for... Divine timing, green sea turtle. If Kamala wins, what I would say for Trump supporters is the transformation has arrived. The Republican Party has definitely shared its past. I feel like they're a bigger, stronger party. There's a lot more um, nourishment within the party. I feel like it does feel, yeah, kind of transformative. I feel like it's just the beginning of a new cycle. I feel like Republicans will definitely be stronger either way. I think it would be a win-win win for them, even if they lose the election. I think they've learned a lot from this campaign too, and they've definitely got a team that seems to be um, united. It seems to be cohesive. It seems to be authentic, I guess. And um, it will just be the beginning of a new era. I think 
Trump through all the trials and tribulations. He has inspired a brand new generation. Um, he definitely shifted the paradigm. I definitely think he allowed a lot of the public to see some of the the warts and all of politics and government and you know change is good so that's the medicine for the Trump supporters and if Trump wins divine timing trust that this is the right moment right now that Things might be, because there is some unheard and unseen things out there that might interfere the, with this election and not having the result that you hoped and prayed for, um, that you just have to get your ducks in a row. I think Kamala is just not there yet to be a leader and the world right now is very um, turbulent potentially. It's not quite the right, Kamala is not quite the right medicine to fight um, the good fight right now. There is much more um, there's much more energies around her that she needs to somehow yeah, she needs to cut away. You can't be foolish to play with predators, really, um, and presume you'll survive um, spiritually, emotionally. And so I think that's the medicine right now. Trust that it's divine timing and that right now Trump is what the people need. And so with that... Um, I think that's the end of the reading. Maybe I'll just close out with a, a few little messages of hope. What can go with the total energy for the Kamala supporters? Life is short. Leave no lovely word unsaid. I feel like that comes back to projection. You know how I was saying when you need to project what it is that we want in, to see in the world and you know with being unseen and unheard and trying to project that dreams and hopes and desires into one person into one president into one campaign into the first female president to you know it's that the message is to look within and to build your own sovereignty up and that when we do that as a collective that's when the collective changes it's so hard to put the the burden of everyone's hopes and desires into a system, into a powerful machine. Uh, either side, it's a powerful machine full of historical, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Historical history, like just a lot of things happening in there that needs to get cleared up one way or the other. Um, and that your life is short and that maybe we could start bridging these two parties together and remember that we are all the people and community is really the healing of all things i think love and community um i think finally we're gonna come to a time where we realize that a lot of these establishments are self-serving and that maybe both parties are corrupt a little. Like I said, there's good in the bad and bad in the good. And um, we just need to build our own sovereignty up. And be kind to each other. Okay, let's have a final message for the butterfly and grace for the Trump supporters. Stay close to people who feel like sunlight. Wow. And be a kind human. Exactly. Book, that's it just remember lean into what feels good 
don't lean into what feels like division. And with that, I say good luck and thank you for watching. It's a little bit unusual for me to um, look at these sort of events, but I just felt called to do it. So I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, then uh, please leave a comment. Thanks a million.